we're going to Hobby Lobby right now because I needed some more yarn for the ruffle hat that I'm gonna work on today. I wanted this a while ago, but I just never got it. But I won't get that for now. I think it's on the other side. Uh, this? This yarn. Oh, they want more of this color, Delphinium. So yeah guys, these are the colors I'm gonna get for now. I'm trying to think if I need anything else while I'm here. You know, cause I don't wanna like leave and then wish I bought something. Uh, well, I'll just need like probably one more of these. This should be a good amount. I shouldn't need anything else. Hey guys, welcome back to the crochet with me. I got some yarn. I got the yarn that I needed. And here it is. It's the Graceland Fair and it's Yarn Bee and it's in the Dreamspun collection. Here's what it looks like. I actually got three of them this time because every time I make one of these ruffle hats, I always run out and then I need to have another one so I end up using like another random color just to kind of finish the hat but yeah I actually got three of these this time so now I can just make it so I'm about to get started I got my six millimeter hook and now we're gonna start making the ruffle hat hey guys I'm finished with row two and yes I'm watching Drew and Inya because I love watching their videos or any podcast while I crochet This is the progress that I've made on the ruffle hat and it looks really cute. I'm so proud of how it's turning out. I've actually made one of these ruffle hats before using this exact same yarn, the Graceland Fair pink color, but I got an order on it. I didn't have it restocked in my shop, so I had to go out and get the yarn. And the order that I got was so cute. So it was actually from a lady and I think her name is Alex. Uh, she said that she saw me on Pinterest, which I was actually like really um, like surprised by because sometimes I feel like when I post on Pinterest, it doesn't really like do anything, but I just continue to post there because literally right now I just like sharing my art want to share my art into the world no matter who sees it but she said she saw myself on Pinterest um she went to my Etsy shop and she bought the pattern but then she also wanted to get a hat from me as well so she um went to my shop and then she got a ruffle hat this was one of the colors that she wanted me to make so yeah I'm so excited to make this one everything about this order super was super sweet and I really just appreciate the support and like anyone who messages me or anyone who buys my patterns or a hat or whatever it just really makes me happy and and it already just adds to the fact that I like to crochet. And this is how much yarn I have from the first scheme. I actually really love making ruffle hats. They actually are really popular now. Like I feel like they're like kind of trendy now. But I started making them actually like sometime around last year. And I like experimented with this. I think it was a Karen cake yarn. And it was like this mint chocolate chip color that I experimented with. I also made like a lot of ruffle hats using this exact color. One of my very first ruffle hats was using this color. That's when I was experimenting with it. I didn't really like those ruffle hats and I didn't have like a good pattern for the ruffles so I've actually been experimenting with making these types of hats for like almost a year now and like recently when I posted my pattern in May or June I like felt like at that time I had a really good ruffle pattern that I was super proud of I feel like there's a lot of tutorials on like the close ruffle type of ruffle hats I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about I'll post some examples but I feel like there's a lot of like tutorials on those kind but it wasn't really like a lot of like patterns or anything on like the big ruffles where the ruffles were kind of like more spread apart I kind of think I might make a YouTube pattern for the ruffle hats that are like close together just because I want to have my own rendition on it there so I might make like a YouTube video for that one but for this one I have a pattern on my website for this one and speaking of patterns on my website that brings us to today's partnership with Universe and Universe is a website builder where you can easily customize your own website for anything that you want to your own style and aesthetic and you can do it right from the touch of your iPhone or iPad or even a computer me personally I've already been using Universe for almost a year now and so I can't say that I I thoroughly am satisfied with this app. I feel like it was really a game changer for building a website on your phone or on your iPad, which I use the most. And you can easily like, save something you've done on your phone and then you know quickly go to your iPad and then resume working right on another device. With Universe, you can easily claim your own domain. And this is really important because you know you want to have a domain so that you can build brand reliability and trust, like having a .com or .org. Mine is joanbakesco.org. So when you're building your own website, you can either start with a blank canvas this or you can use some of the templates that Universe has or you can also use Universe's AI called Gus to help you build your website. For me personally, when I first made my website, I just started off with a background color and then I added some buttons and then I added some text to those buttons. I linked the buttons to other pages of my website and it's really really simple to add pages to your website. You just click on your website essentially and then at the top of the screen you'll see a add page button. You could just click that and choose one of the templates that they have for like products or 
or even about page or portfolio or you can start with a blank canvas so say like if i wanted to make a new releases page since it's new releases i would probably just choose product page so this will be like a whole bunch of new releases not just my normal product and then i'll add like this new ruffle hat that i'm making in this video i'll add that in at the price adjust the size of the boxes to match the rest of my website now you can easily just have a new page on your website so as you can see i'm just playing with the fonts of the new products title that i have in the top of this page and i'm going to customs and i think i kind of like a rounded look so I'm going to stick with that font and then I'm just playing around with the font size as well so that it looks really cohesive. And then I'm just choosing the blocks that I want to represent the picture. And yeah, now I'm just adding the picture from my gallery and now I'm just going to add like a rounded look to it because I kind of like how it looks when it's rounded. And then now I'm just adding the price and everything. And then once again, like once I add the price, then I'm going to just play around with the fonts as well as the font size and then once I've done that and made that look really cohesive with my page I'm going to add in the cell block where the block is actually connected to the products that I've added to my website and that way people can add this to their cart so as you can see I have all my products and I'm just choosing which product this is and I have the pink and purple ruffle hat so now that I have this block I'm going to make this block say add to cart and then they can just add this to their cart and now they can get it so I'm playing around with the font again making it the same as the title and the rest of the page and then now I'm just deleting these excess rows that I don't need and now I have a new products page. Now I'm going to show you how you can connect the page that you just created to a button so that people can access it. So what I'm going to do is just select a couple blocks and I'm going to paste a button that I have previously made or you can just press button and you can make your own from scratch. And then I'm just going to play around with the font and colors just so that it's cohesive with the rest of my website. And I'm going to make it say new releases so that it matches the new page that I just created. And then once I do that, I get my font right, my color right, and also the um, position of the button. Now I can just click that button, essentially go to links and press open another page. And then it'll pop up to all the pages you've created for this website and then you just select the page you want to link to. So I'm going to choose the new products page and now this button works as a button on my website. So if I were to view this website as a user, I just click the new releases button and now it'll take me to my new products in that page that I just created. So it's really easy to customize your website with colors, the size of buttons that you add, shapes, and you can even add layers of PNGs, jiffies, different fonts, and make your website really match your brand identity and your own style. I like how you can easily just insert buttons or pictures or whatever, and you can add a link to that button, and then now when you click it, it goes to whatever you assign it to go to. They have like these little icons that you can use, like a Twitter icon, a YouTube icon, a email icon, that you can use and I actually have it on my website in the top with these little like black icons and you can easily just link whatever social media that you want to add there Instagram TikTok YouTube and yeah or you can even customize it by using your own PNGs for example if I want to add this little ice cream icon I can literally just add it in here and then I can click it press add link and I can literally link it to my YouTube channel so if you click that it'll take you to my YouTube channel now so as you can see, I'm just adding the picture that I literally got from Google and I'm just resizing it and making sure I like the way it fits. And then I'm going to click the button and go to links. And then I'm going to just paste my YouTube URL so that when you click it, it goes to my YouTube channel and then press add link. And then now it's set. So if I were to view this as a user, now when I click this ice cream, it will take the person directly to my YouTube channel. You can use the blocks to move things around and adjust your placement for whatever you want to do. And I do this a lot in my portfolio where I'm adjusting the blocks of the pictures so that I can make them, you know, fit whatever design I want. If I want the pictures to be really big or really small. They also have like a download block that you can add so that you can sell digital products like how I sell my patterns. I just use the uh, download block and then you can also add a price if you want to sell the download or if you just want to have the download available for whoever wants it on your website. Website. So I think that's really a cool function, especially for like fiber artists like me who like to make patterns. Universe also has a Universe Pro option, which I use as well. If you get Universe Pro, you have the option to remove all Universe branding on your website. And Pro members benefit from lower transaction fees and a faster payout rate. Click the link in my description if you want to get Universe for yourself on the App Store. You can also get 25% off your first year of Universe Pro if you use my link in the description to get Universe.
so yeah thank you universe for sponsoring this video and i heard a lot of people saying like they wanted me to make a video pattern for this ruffle hat but i'm kind of like facing a dilemma where i'm like okay so i have people who paid for a pattern but then if i make a free pattern like wouldn't that like not be fair so tell me what you think because i actually do want to make a video pattern for this but i don't know how it make it fair to like everyone who's bought a pattern or whatever i don't know yeah so just comment any suggestions of like what i can do to make it fair because i genuinely do want to make a video pattern since it's been requested so much and also i experimented with ruffle hat had the fur on them and i just have made so many different types personally i just really favor like the big loops versus the close together loops so i just finished making the base right here and now i'm gonna make the ruffles because that's the most exciting part right so this is how far i am on the ruffles i'm not gonna lie this is getting really repetitive and my wrists are actually starting to hurt i need to get some compression gloves because as a crocheter i think everyone should probably get them and i need to get some i've gotten a little farther on the ruffles i'm on the last row of the ruffles and yeah i'm just really really tired actually after i make this i'm probably we're gonna have to go to sleep because i've been crocheting for so long okay guys i'm back yes it is another day i've just been like super busy with school everything it's just been so hard to crochet but in all that time i have finished the pink ruffle hat and look at how cute it is like it just turned out super cute with these ruffles yeah if you buy this pattern make sure you get three skeins of the yarn not two you're definitely gonna need three especially if you want to make the tension a little bit looser so that it can the ruffles can be like more bigger i absolutely love it okay guys so i just put the pink ruffle hat on and like look at how cute this is this is literally so cute and since i use like a really loose tension the ruffles look even like bigger they look really good and i just kind of like shape this one in the middle to kind of fall this way and yeah look how cute super duper cute love it love it love it y'all need to go make sure y'all get the pattern for this because this is just really really cute like you can really style this to make it look really good with whatever you're wearing like i feel like this is just a great accessory to have in your closet especially if you know how to crochet like why not make one of these like okay guys now that we've finished making that ruffle hat i have this other one that i need to finish making i just never was able to get the yarn but i finally got another skein of yarn once again make sure you get three skeins instead of two because i've just been getting two and i don't know how they like lasted for my other ruffle hats but i guess my tension is looser so yeah i recommend getting three just to like be on the safe side and this is dream spun twilight planes this one is like really really pretty i think like this might be my favorite one out of all of the uh, dream spun collection already on the ruffles of this hat like the last row of ruffles so so yeah, I'm just going to continue doing that and yeah, now I'm just finding the center pull. Oh, also, I got compression gloves. I should probably put these on. Yeah, I've been meaning to get some compression gloves because I've just been needing to get some. Especially when I make ruffle hats, my hands start cramping and they really hurt. Not really cramping, but they just get like sore. I just don't want to like become a problem, especially since I love crocheting so much. Got some cute gloves. These are actually really cute. Yeah, I don't know like how well these are going to work, but yeah. I need to actually join this so that it doesn't run out as I go. Let's just join this. Okay, everything is joined. I'm just snipping off these ends. So here's my question to you guys if you're watching these crochet with me videos. Do you guys like to actually see the crocheting that's going on? That's just like to have the person like just talking and like just know that they're crocheting? Or do you guys like to like just like see the hand movements of the crocheting? Like what, what do you guys look for in a crochet with me? Or do you just like like knowing that you can crochet and sit down with somebody else who's also crocheting? Because I'm trying to figure out like do I need a separate camera to like, sit over when I'm crocheting? You guys let me know. I'm finished making the for ruffle hat here's how it looks this is just too pretty like this is just way too pretty i am about to weave in the ends um honestly i think this is the most boring part but this is the most rewarding part because you know like when you're weaving in the ends you're basically finished that's the best part of making anything in crochet when you're at the weaving in the ends like you almost get to like kind of appreciate the work as you're like weaving in to the spots to make the ends of the yarn kind of disappear into the work so i just placed this ruffle hat on the mannequin and look at how good it looks this is just way too pretty and like i like these yellows right here this is really cute okay y'all so here's how this ruffle hat is looking i'm kind of like shaping it a little bit so that i can lay down in a beautiful way and yeah look at how cute this looks so like when i made this hat i already kind of laid down like this part just kind of laid this way I just kind of like shaped a few up here so i just recommend to get three skeins and use a loose 
loose tension and your ruffles should come out like this if you follow the pattern now it's really time to go and make the skirt i'm really excited to make this like freehand skirt using like many types of yarn or whatever okay so now i'm gonna start on the skirt that i want to make i want to make a skirt with like a just like using many different types of yarn different like textures yarns not just like simple wait for yarn i still want to use wait for yarn but i want to use something like this which honestly y'all i got this from like a lot of yarn off of ebay so i don't even know like what kind of yarn this is but like it looks really cool right and i don't want the skirt to have any like certain like color theme i just want it to be super mixed match and kind of like random colors kind of want this skirt to give like you know i want to give random you know i don't want it to be like a bulky like ribbed trim or anything i think i just want the trim to be like a simple row of like literally just double crochet not have the trim be too much because i don't want the trim to be like a big statement piece i'm going to use a tinier hook because i want it i want it to be like pretty tight around the top okay so i'm gonna try to see if this fits around me so yeah it's gonna be kind of too big so i'm gonna like take some of these chains off right here and i'll tell you guys how many chains i use i also don't want it to be too loose but i want it to be tight enough to the point where it can like hold itself around me without like needing any kind of like reinforcements you know okay so i just finished counting all these chains and it's 103 chains and now i'm going to join this together and then i'm gonna do a row of just black double crochet for the like first row i think i'm going to switch to a five millimeter crochet hook once i get to the second row i just kind of want this foundation row to be you know tight and stiff essentially while the rest can be free hanging and like flowy i actually just ran out of black yarn so now i need to join some more i finished making the band and it's just a row of black double crochet yeah now that i have the band ready now we can just actually do whatever we want and like experiment with like all these different types of yarns i don't know what this is gonna look like y'all i'm literally just like eyeing it i wonder if this should be paired with another yarn or like if it should be doubled up i'm not sure yeah this is so thin it feels like it should be doubled up with something I should probably try and use like a more solid yarn for the next row. We're gonna get a more solid yarn, maybe like green or something. Here's the green that I'm probably gonna use. And we're gonna see how this one is gonna look. And then I think I wanna do like a beige color after this to like bring some more light into it. Now I'm about to add in this brown color, then maybe the beige. I think that adding the brown color will like just give it some good variety for now. And then I'll add in the beige. But I finished the third row. There's like the brown layers turning out super cute. And now I'm gonna add this like special speckly beige color speckly beige color like this yeah we're gonna see how this is gonna turn out i think i want to do two rows just to kind of like brighten up the skirt a little bit and then we'll like go into some other like really cool stuff maybe i'll try and add this i don't know i keep taking on and off this compression glove because like even though it's not tight like it kind of hurts more than it feel like it's helping but then while i took it off my hands like started hurting while i was making the skirt i was like yeah i might need to put this back on we have five rows finished now i kind of want to do this like fuzzy pink color but i think i'm gonna combine it with this white so that it has more stabilization because just by itself it's super thin but yeah we're gonna combine it and see how it works combine these two together as like one piece of yarn it's kind of giving candy cane so i don't know if i'm gonna continue using this but like it's not like giving where i need it to really give but then again this skirt is supposed to be whimsical mix mat what do you guys think yeah i might i might keep it it's kind of cute super fun to crochet with these two yarns at one time I'm actually looking at this and it's turning out really well like this is kind of the vibe that I was going for so I'm so glad that I continued on with this pink and this white color all right so here is what we have right now it's looking really really good crocheting with these two strands of yarn made it go by so quick that I barely even realized that I was like approaching the end of the row that's how you know if you just spice up your crochet you won't get like bored with it because sometimes I get kind of bored I absolutely love how this is turning out now I think I'm probably gonna go back in with this green under here just to like tie this top back in and I want to go back in with some brown maybe like another Another shade of brown and then i want to like add some purple or blue in here somewhere i have finished the seventh row of the skirt and here's what it's looking like i think i'm gonna do another row of the black just to kind of like close off this like block I'm adding this little beige color. It kind of looks white from over here, but it's beige. We're going to kind of like keep it neutral, like going down and more like neutral tone colors. Okay, guys, so this is how far I am with the skirt. This is what it looks like. So right now I'm doing like a layer of blue and I, before that I did a layer of purple. And so far it looks really, really good. After this, I think I want to do some like black, another green to like tie in this green back again. I might do this speckly green. And then I do want to go in with like this fuzzy white yarn that I have. Here's the fuzzy yarn. Yeah, now we're going to add this fuzzy yarn in. Okay, guys. So here's an update on 20 rows in. And yeah, I think I'm going to probably add some more like pinkish color in. So 
out of this bag of yarn. I'm probably going to use this cute pink yarn. Let's see what this yarn is called, actually. It's called, uh, let's see. This is the name of it. It's an eight ply double knit. It's probably not really for crochet, but I'm going to crochet with it. Here's the ball that I'm about to use. And we're going to add it to the edge of this skirt. Here's what it's looking like. Look how pretty this is. So yeah, I have it doubled up. Yeah, that makes all the difference. That makes all the difference doubling these two strands together. I actually need to go and charge this camera because the red thing is beeping. So yeah, I'm going to just keep crocheting, guys. I'm going to miss some progress, but that's okay. It's going to be okay. On this 27th row, I decreased three stitches. On this 28th row, I also decreased three more stitches. So probably down to like 97. Okay, guys, so we are overdue for an update on this skirt. So you guys know how I did a decrease row. I did a decrease row on this blue row. And I did a decrease row on five more extra rows. So I did a total of six decrease rows where I did three decreases in each row. So on row 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27, I did decreases. And yeah i only took off three stitches in each of those rows so it kind of like tapers off a little bit and it looks really really good now and i'm like really loving how the skirt's turning out because it has this like mix match kind of vibe that i was exactly going for like these fuzzy colors and i just added some more all the way at the end right here so yeah this is really looking good and i'm so excited to see the finished product okay guys so i finished the skirt and here's how it looks Here's what it looks like. fun project to do and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys want to come back for more crochet with me it's because this was really fun to do and it made me like make more things in a week where usually I would just make like one thing in like a month. Yeah I know that's like really bad but this made me crochet more and I made a skirt for the first time so this was really really fun. Thank you guys for watching. Mm -hmm.